This week's review was sponsored by... The all-new Cut the Wire game. The device is ticking and is about to go off. Which wire will you cut? Which is danger? Which is safe? See who can defuse or lose. Cut the Wire, the game by Yulu. Only a target. Batteries not included. Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe bomb disposal vehicle from 1985. It didn't have a fancy code name, it didn't appear in the comic books, and it didn't appear in cartoon form either. Rather unfortunate because it is such a very practical vehicle. The bomb disposal vehicle is a fairly small toy. It's a one-man vehicle. And I'll just put a not so random three and three quarter inch figure here just to give you a sense of scale. The vehicle itself was fairly simple. You'll notice that there is a bomb and two mines in the background, but I'll get to those actually a bit later. The bomb disposal does not have real rolling treads, as I wouldn't expect it to at its price range. But it does have some wheels underneath there in order for you to roll this thing around. It has a fairly detailed cockpit here with some nice seating, some diamond plate around the uh, edges of that seating in order to simulate some grip for a figure to actually climb up into this thing. And two little hand holes just to simulate a steering. It also has a blast shield if I just push this down out of the way, you can actually see the blast shield actually does have a little eyelet here. You can actually see out through the other end. You notice that it does have an articulated front arm, which goes along with the front scoop here. And this is primarily how you would uh, play with this thing. You'd have a bomb or whatever obstacle here, and you scoop it up and use the arms here, and the arm... Uh, is articulated both at a pivoting point and a sliding point. So you can slide this thing back along here to give a, a little bit of a squeeze to whatever item that you're picking up or a bit forward to make it a bit larger. You notice that on the scoop arm, at least the front bit, it looks like there's a hinge there and a hydraulic piston. However, that doesn't work. It's just there just for looks. It's rather unfortunate because I think it could have been um, assembled in a way that it could have been articulated and the piston could have moved, but it actually doesn't. It's just a really, really nice detail. One thing about the top grabbing arm is you do have to kind of keep it loose in order for you to be able to actually articulate this. And that's rather unfortunate because sometimes you really do want to display it sort of uh, in mid-arc like this. And really the only way to do that is to sort of rest it on the top of this really odd little bit of detail on the shield here. So what you want to do is you want to pull this thing back until it rests on that little piece there. And that's really the only way you could make a loose top arm to sort of hang there, sort of in the moment of action, as it were, rather than just having it flop down like this. By now, you must have realized that despite being a G.I. Joe vehicle and usually armed to the teeth, the bomb disposal has no armaments of its own. However, it does have a universal tow hook, which means that you can add a towed weapon system, like this 1983 whirlwind twin battle gun, or something else. The bomb disposal vehicle was part of a very strange subgroup of mini vehicles in 1985, which actually shared characteristics of play sets at the time. Among them were the Cobra Night Landing Raft, as well as a sister vehicle to the bomb disposal, the Weapon Transport. 
Interestingly enough, in 1988, both the bomb disposal and the weapon transport were available as mail away items. However, you will note that in the text, they tend to work together here, one gathering up the weapons and the other one hauling them away. So just who would be a good driver for the bomb disposal vehicle? Well, personally, I have my all time favorite figure, Sergeant Flash here, as my normal occupant for this vehicle. He is shown on the box art as well. However, he is not an EOD or Explosive Ordnance Disposal person according to his file card. As I've shown Tripwire before, there was actually a second version of Tripwire released in 1985, the same year that the bomb disposal was released. So he makes a fairly good driver for it, especially if you have two tripwires, the original 83 version in all military green, and a second one in bright orange. Bright orange being a fairly good uh, hazard duty outfit for a vehicle like this. Now the bomb disposal came with two accessories, a bomb and a pair of mines. And they don't go onto the vehicle, they're really just meant for you to use them as examples of what to scoop up and push away in your bomb disposal adventures. Like I said, this series of mini vehicles had a hint of playset to them. Taking a look at the bomb itself, however, as you can see, it's a well detailed bomb, but it has no pegs or that universal dumbbell uh, hole for pegs on other vehicles. So it's really just an accent piece. It doesn't really, can't really connect to any other vehicle. And here's a close look at the mine. It almost looks like a wheel. So what is the rival for the bomb disposal vehicle on the Cobra side? Well, Cobra seems more interested in planting bombs than getting rid of them. So there actually isn't one specific bomb disposal vehicle in the vintage run at least. However, there are a few items which are candidates for bomb disposal, such as the snake. The snake is a blast proof, bomb proof suit of armor and can be used. It certainly has the dexterous little claw and certainly a plethora of little weapons in which to destroy at close range any missile or bomb. Here I have the blue version, which was released in 1985, the same year that we have the bomb disposal. However, if you're looking for something which can scoop up a bomb, missile, or mine, in 1992, there was the Cobra Earthquake. And again, it doesn't necessarily say that it uses that giant scoop or getting rid of bombs or missiles, but it certainly has the armor and the power to get rid of anything. I would highly recommend tracking down one of these vehicles if you have a classic military looking G.I. Joe collection. Like I said, it's not based on any real world bomb disposal vehicle, but there's a certain logic to how this thing is designed. And even if you didn't want it as a bomb clearing vehicle, it could also be used as a trench making vehicle or any type of CB or construction battalion vehicle for your engineers in the background. And that's the other thing, is that this thing is basically built to be a background vehicle. Now, I'm sure you would have some fun scooping up your bombs and your mines here, but honestly, in today's world, you'd really want a more armed vehicle, something which you would have on the forefront of your display rather than behind it. Honestly, I don't think a vehicle like this would even be ever built or retail if the G.I. Joe line wasn't really at its height in 1985. I mean, this is where Hasbro was pulling in a, b a billion dollars just on their G.I. Joe line alone. So it's no wonder we have these sort of world building vehicles like this and the weapon transport. That being said, it just looks so good. And I usually have it displayed with my flash figure in my 1982 to 1983 range of toy displays. So it really goes well with that. The toy itself, if you're looking for one on the aftermarket, is actually very, very sturdy. There's really nothing to look out for uh, breakages wise. 
Despite the fact that the arms are rather uh, skinny, they're actually made of a very pliable plastic and they don't break or warp fairly easily. Even though I have the blast shield separated here, that's just to, to show you the cockpit really. That thing does come out, but it actually sits in there fairly firmly, and that's not a part which you would lose on the vehicle. But that's only if you're looking for the vehicle by itself. If you're looking for the accessories, and yes, I would call these accessories rather than parts of the vehicle, well, you might find the, the bomb here. The mines are probably the hardest things to find in this set. While they might be extremely hard, the whole set altogether absolutely complete still doesn't go for a lot because it's not very popular with a lot of collectors, unfortunately. It's actually a fairly small vehicle, perfect for anyone who wants to be a duck poop there. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.